So in this installment, we are going to discuss different force types and, ex and start looking at different examples of forces. So I included for your viewing pleasure this little reference to our previous lesson on the evolution of the fundamental forces, those being, of course, gravity, the strong force, the weak force, and the electromagnetic force, and this conjectured one, dark energy. So they are fundamental forces. Now we've seen the word fundamental in reference to units before. We've said there are fundamental units and there are derived units. And so an example of a fundamental unit, if we were to look at the, say, the formula for the net force, well, that is kilograms, meters, and seconds squared. So the fundamental units of the net force are kilogram meters per second squared, and we then say that that is equal to, that one kilogram meter per second squared is equal to one newton. And so that newton is the derived unit. And so what I'm gonna suggest is that forces operate very, very much like that. That there are fundamental forces. There are only four, maybe a fifth. There are only four, and all other things that we describe as forces are combinations of those fundamental forces. They are either combinations, nearly all forces are combinations, or, or macroscopic manifestations. And we'll see what we mean by that as we, as we start looking at the different examples. So the force types, we've said fundamental and derived. Gravity, electromagnetic, strong and weak, perhaps dark energy, and the derived is all others. So this is one bifurcating scheme for looking at forces, fundamental and derived. Another scheme is conservative forces and non-conservative forces. And the utility in this idea, in breaking them down, is that conservative forces depend only on the position of the object. Depend only on the position of the object, first thing. And the total work is independent of the path taken. Now, we've seen this idea of path independence before, and notice that, that inclusion of the word work. Work being done, going into potential energy, and being path independent. And so any kind of force that has those attributes would be a conservative force. And those examples, of course, are gravity, electric force, magnetic force, elastic force. When we take a spring and stretch it, the work done and the potential energy in that depends only on the position of the object. It doesn't matter how we move it. It's just that potential energy depends only on that, that position. So the non-conservative forces are those in which the position of the object isn't the only cause, and the total work is, is, is um, not dependent on the path taken. And so it basically boils down to all others. Now, I'm not going to fill in this table below, but I want to illustrate conceptually what we're saying is we could take a force, for example, and we could say gravity. And we could say, okay, gravity, is it fundamental? Is it fundamental? Yes, it's one of the four fundamental forces. Okay, but the question then, is it conservative or non-conservative? It is conservative. And that's our type example. We could then take a look at, say, elastic force. Is it fundamental? No, it's derived. Is it conservative? Yes. And so we could categorize forces based on these two different sets of attributes, whether or not they're conservative and whether or not they're fundamental. Each of them tells us something something different. I, when I first came upon the idea of fundamental forces and derived forces, the idea that derived forces are really all just a result of combinations or macroscopic uh, manifestation of fundamental forces, I found that very eye-popping. And that's going to be um, a theme as we go through each of the individual types of forces. One other thing I would like to point out about fundamental forces while we have you here is that gravity happens on our scale. We see the effects of it. Electromagnetic happens on our scale. The strong force is about quarks. The weak force is about a neutron and a proton, a, 
a proton and an electron. So these forces are not things we deal with on a daily basis. They are at a scale smaller than an atom. So by virtue of that fact, what we realize is that all large-scale phenomena, every phenomenon we see, in fact, is fundamentally due to gravity or the electromagnetic force. All phenomena we observe on a daily basis. And if we want to observe the phenomena relating to those other two forces, well, we need to go to CERN or some other large particle collider to see those in, in action. So that's our first part of introduction to force types. In the next installment, we're going to look more specifically at these derived types of forces that in our course we're going to look at next.